But actually, I wanted to tell him, son, like most things, worthwhile, it takes a village. And it takes a vision. And a vision of living together in a shared hope. And at times, disappointment and frustration and renewal. When we get disappointed in our leaders or in one another, you know, one way to restore the heartwood of covenantal commitment is the way UU psychologist Mary Pfeiffer once said, you keep a marriage together over the long haul. You try getting up in the morning, and then you look yourself straight in the mirror, and you say to yourself several times, you know, you're no prize either. <laughs> Annie Lamott great spiritual writer and novelist. In her latest book, uses a wonderful line from Rumi. Each imperfect bird has to enter into a nest built by other imperfect birds. And so we do. Like Thoreau's advice to all those of us who tend to be idealists and have an image of the perfect in our minds, before we have tried to build. If you've built your castles in the air, you said, your work need not be lost. That is where they should be. Now, put the foundations under them. In other words, as our story this morning implied, we need to make the church invisible of our wildest hopes and dreams more visible. For even now, we live surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Faithful souls, those who've labored before us, what they dreamed be ours to do. My father could work in wood. I have devoted my life to working with human hearts bending and shaping and planing them toward one another while they're still pliable. And in moments when we recognize our need before our hearts harden. Trying to see the pattern in our human striving that we can build together the hopes we know we most deeply share, trying to see the moral to be drawn from this shared history of breath, the spirit that breathes us as much as we breathe it, the one in which we live and move and have our very being. Our mission, then, is to make religion more progressive and those who fancy themselves progressives in this world to be more religious. My book closes with a chapter that's about our mission, the one we share, you and I, and goes halfway around the world to India to get it. Let me be, end with a story that's not in the book but comes from the same place, from a few years after I met Marlon, who'd just been there. I went there to visit, after the Gujarat earthquake, some of the human rights activists that we Unitarian Universalists support through our Holding India program. And my friend Vivek came to the airport to greet me in Mumbai. He runs a training center for human rights workers that we help build. His personal mission has been to free from that modern form of slavery called bonded labor, literally tens of thousands of people. He got the World Anti-Slavery Award that I nominated him for. But when he met me, India was going through violence directed against its Muslim minority and against Christian missionaries. The ruling party then was in bed with a Hindu version of the religious right, who were better at making scapegoats of minorities than at caring about the future or the common good. 
And no sooner than I emerged from customs and been greeted and embraced by Vivek than we found ourselves surrounded by a mob of these right-wing militants. Got a little scary when the airport police joined in and they were all pointing at me. It all had to be translated for me, but they were demanding to know if I were a missionary. Vivek jumped up on a bench and shouted back, Yes! He is a missionary. But you have not asked what his mission is. His mission is not conversions. His mission is respect for the divine light in every human soul. His mission is human rights. His mission is partnership with those of us here who struggle against injustice and poverty and the destruction of the earth. Now I ask you, what is your mission? Is this how your fathers taught you to welcome a stranger? You should wash his feet. You should offer him water. He would take it even from one of you who some of you call untouchable. What would the Gandhiji, the Mahatma, think about you? He would fast until you repent and find a better way in your hearts, a truer mission for yourselves. Now go home, and may the gods help you find a better hope. They dispersed. They went away with nothing more than what Gandhi would have called satyagraha, soul force, truth force. He sent them away to seek a deeper and more heartfelt approach to faithful living. Rebecca and I wrote our book in a dialogue to show that in our tradition, no one voice can ever claim to have the final word. Because the mission we share, my friends, is shared. It's to reclaim the very heartwood of our faith, our covenantal trust with one another, our ability to see in the other the heartbeat of the divine and then to help make a world that is worthy of all the daughters and sons of God. So may it be forever in this place and wherever we travel. Amen.